I have a few things I'm going to get through today uh, in this video, but it comes to you mainly in two parts. The first part is the book review, and the second part are geckos. So last time I spoke about books, I gave you guys the options to choose uh, which book I should read, and funny story, <laughs> everybody said I should read uh, a different book, so there was no definitive answer there. But um, I was in the middle of reading Frankenstein, uh, so I had finished Frankenstein, and that was an awesome book, and I'm going to review that. And I also read a few more that I'm also going to review. So starting with Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is the original version written a long time ago in the 1800s. And it has sort of that old school language that um, you would expect from that time period. It's one of those books that gets you thinking about uh, morality and ethics. Frankenstein was uh, sort of the, the mind behind the monster. And he created the monster, but he was so afraid of it. He ran away from it, and from the beginning of the monster's life, it never felt love, it never felt uh, affection or compassion from other people while the monster wasn't a person. It was like this monstrosity, but it, it, it sort of brings up the ideas of if people create something, are they responsible for what they create in terms of uh, the happiness of the being that they created. Very good book out of a scale from 1 to 10. I would probably rate it. Uh, an 8. Highly recommended. Uh, although the language might be difficult for some people, so that's why it loses uh, a few points. But it's a very, very good book. It's one of those books that you have to think about a lot. Another book I read was A Tale Dark and Grim. And this is just the book cover because I actually lent uh, the book to my girlfriend to read. And it's actually a retelling of the Hansel and Gretel story. But it's sort of more true to the way the, the original Grimm brothers wanted to read it write it it was like a really dark tale they come to the house made of candy not nah, it's not like that it's really a darker one i don't really like the writing in this book that much and i'll tell you why have you ever read a series of unfortunate events where they say oh and if you want to read a nice happy tale with a happy ending then this isn't the book for you that's sort of how this is the narrator keeps coming in and interjecting things into the story and i think it's annoying a bit because it takes away from what the narrator is trying to narrate. I think that type of writing, and similar to Series of Unfortunate Events, uh, it's just bad writing. You, you don't, you're not supposed to do that, at least classically in books. It's like, the narrator got lazy or bored of the story and decided to spice it up by saying, something scary is gonna happen at this part, so make sure the children are put to bed. It's like, okay, maybe for a little kid, fine, but nah, it's not working out here. So this book, I'll give it probably a 4 out of 10. It, it looked cool. I mean, the cover is totally me. I was judging the book by the cover when I purchased it. It wasn't that good. I also read Through the Looking Glass. This is another one of those books that I said uh, I might read, and I did. And it was the second part to Alice's Adventures of Wonderland, written by uh, Lewis Carroll. I actually like Through the Looking Glass. I didn't like it as much as Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, but it was still fun to read, and they do really go together. Through the Looking Glass did not have uh, the characters, the same characters at least, from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The Hatta and the March Hare do make an appearance, and their names are completely changed. But um, Through the Looking Glass is cool because they, it's sort of like the whole story is based on chess. And... You have the Red Queen and the White Queen and the Red King and the White King. And Alice is, try is a pawn and she's trying to become a queen herself. And in the end, she does become a queen. It's not all she thought it would be. So it's a it's an interesting story. And I think it goes very well with uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland as a follow-up. Overall, through the Looking Glass, I would probably give it a 7.5 out of 10. However, if you are going to see the Tim Burton version of the movie... Alice in Wonderland, you definitely need to read Through the Looking Glass. The poem about the Jabberwocky and slaying the Jabberwocky was taken from Through the Looking Glass. And also, the whole thing about the Red Queen and the White Queen, what's going on there, that's all uh, Through the Looking Glass as well. Actually, uh, Tim Burton's story is based less on Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and more on Through the Looking Glass. So I haven't shown you guys my crested gecko freckles in a long time. Um, I just woke him up so he's not really that happy. And uh, I just figured I'd show him to you uh, to show you how big he's gotten. Woo. Sorry, he sort of took a leap of faith there. He's gotten really, really big since I last showed him to you guys. 
and he's trying to get away. <laughs> very, very beautiful little gecko. Cool patterns in the back. But uh, recently I went to a reptile expo and I got another gecko. So let's go check that out. So guys, this is this is my other gecko. You can tell it's a lot smaller. It's just the baby. His name or her name is Smores. It's too young to sex. And you can see that uh, it has like brown and cream colors. It's a really cool pattern. And uh, Donna came up with the name S'mores because of the look of chocolate and um, marshmallow. Yeah, crested geckos take a lot of leaps of faith. That's a cool look right there. Big head just like a baby, you know. Gecko is now safely in his or her tank. Alright, and that's my new Gecko S'mores that I want to show you guys. Uh, that's about all for this week, and I'll see you guys next week.